to Village, and today we're joined by Catherine Emily Gomez. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited for this chat. <laughs> yes, and today we're focusing on the healing power of art. Yes. So Catherine, as an author, a painter, a photographer, can you share with us, first of all, what does art mean to you? Art for me, it's honestly a big part of who I am and my world. Um, not only from graduating from school, I'm pursuing my mm -hmm. master's in art, but also um, in my career as well. And personally, just tying those two worlds together, for me, mm -hmm. art is a form of expression. So sometimes we're channeling different emotions, physical or just anything and um, related to oneself that we might be going through, um, negative, positive, but art is really a way to just get hands-on, um, mm -hmm. be crafty as well, or mm -hmm. have, if you have a vision in mind of goals in the future, it always ties back to art and how to visually represent that, which is really mm -hmm. fun and exciting at the same time. Yeah, so it's like, what's that saying? Um, write the vision, make it plain. Yes. Right? So through art, you're getting everything that's inside of you, you're getting it out. Yes. For some people, verbally might work, having conversations. For others who like to internalize it, um, either way, I think having activities for you to work on as an um, artistically really helps, and it has helped me as well. Oh, that's that's beautiful, because I know that there are many... I know before we said you're an author, a photographer, a painter, but there are many forms of art. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a brush and an easel right. or a camera. It could be like you said, um, verbally to so someone who likes monologues or dancing or making music, right? Yes, there's so much um, within the umbrella of, of art as well. Photography as well, for anyone who's interested in pictures too. Yes, that's right up your realm. So Catherine, yeah. can you can you share with us a moment where art served as a source of healing for you? Absolutely. So for me, um, this was over nine, 10 years ago. Um, I was pursuing my master's, as I mentioned before, uh, where Trish and I are, are alumni from Lehman. <laughs> 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 and so while I was in the middle of my thesis a year before graduating, I had a loss in my life, which was my identical twin sister. And that obviously was a big impact for me and just seeing how life would be moving forward. And thankfully I was in a way looking back, it all makes more sense. Um, I was at the right place at the right time in that program. And mm -hmm. with this loss um, in the beginning of my thesis, I decided to choose the topic of portraiture. And for mm -hmm. identical twins, something that um, you always um, come up in your life is how people visualize you, how they see you. There's two of yeah. you, you're the same. The constant questions always come up of, um, oh, do you think alike? How can people mm -hmm. tell you apart? And so mm -hmm. I really channeled that um, physical self into my artwork by taking portrait shots of myself and compositing, compositing them into different um, surreal kind of artwork where you can take a look at it and interpret it in your own way. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see in a lot of my artworks, if you go to my website, um, mm -hmm. a lot of it has like dream-like um, um, visuals where you mm -hmm. can see um, clouds, shadows. Uh, it, in the beginning, my first couple series are a little bit dark just to um, mm -hmm. show that loss. And even though a lot of my work um, is a, it's about twins, it really mm -hmm. connects to the broader audience of anyone who has lost anyone. Comes to a loss. For those of you who don't know, Emily's Catherine's twin sister, who I was blessed to also have known for a short period of time, her spirit was so yeah. contagious. It was so beautiful. And to have not only to know someone like that, but for someone like that to be your twin, Yes. I just want to make sure that everyone is, you know, they realize how profound that loss was for you and such a, and at such a young age as well. Yes. At 20, 23 years old. Yeah. Right wow. It's such a young age. And I know that you mentioned, you said that some of your earlier works were dark, were darker than they are now. Is that something that you did intentionally or did, it, did that just come out in your work without you even noticing? I think it came out naturally because once the someone you lose someone, it's so fresh 
And that's yeah. literally the state of mind that you're in, regardless mm -hmm. of um, where you are in life. Um, it was just so raw. And that mm -hmm. is what I was expressing in the artwork. And it was, it was what was normal for me. And for anyone else who sees it, they're like, wow, this is really dark. Um, they can feel the pain um, since they're not going through it, but maybe it connects to their own personal life of losing yeah. someone. They could connect with the artwork. Yeah. So, so would you say that your art gave you, allowed you to have the words that you couldn't form verbally? Absolutely. I think so. Mm -hmm. And it gave people an insight of how, how, what I was going through as well by looking mm -hmm. at the artwork. Whereas, you know, normal conversations at the time is my condolences, I'm sorry for your loss. And sometimes yes. silence was even a greater um, support, just having people surrounding you and just, just being there and, and, and feeling comfortable with people just mm -hmm. being there without saying a word too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said that your earlier works were darker compared to now. So can you give us a little bit of the change in your artwork currently? Yeah, no, definitely. I've always known I wanted to go back to painting. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was particularly, there's a series called Divine Stillness. And it's still the portraiture of myself and my sister, two bodies in one, but with um, paintings of, of the landscape. So you can see mountainscapes and the water, the lake, and we're both kind of standing on the water. And so that to me seems a little bit more towards peaceful acceptance, and so you can see like that gradual change in the artwork. And in mm -hmm. the future, which is now, I'm leaning more towards just painting, removing the portraitures, but just working on symbols, like identical symbols together. So it yeah. becomes more genetic um, now that I'm a mom as well. So it's connecting that connection to, um, mm -hmm. to mother daughter and just, um, mm -hmm. you know, just having a bond with human, human to human bond. Mm -hmm. Catherine, that is such a beautiful journey. I know that you just gave us a glimpse into it. You came from a place of darkness and pain and hurt to a place of stillness and acceptance and reconnecting with other things beyond the loss, right? Because you introduced nature and stuff in there. Right. So reconnecting spiritually to other things outside of the loss to in the future where you're going to expand to different things you're allowing yourself the space to think of additional things beyond yes oh that That's is yeah thank you <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing with us and what would you say to someone else who's hurting they're hurting they can't process what's going on internally but they have the option to do art they have the option to do art but they don't know where to start what would you say to them yeah, I would say firstly to um, be patient with yourself. That's someone that um, a family friend of mine told me that when you're in it, it's hard to think of, because we would like to have control of life and we, we wanna have an idea of how to be successful or happy in the moment. But in this time, when you lose someone is just be patient and just go day by day. And if it's even hour by hour, minute by minute, that's okay mm -hmm. too, not knowing and walking through the fog. If it feels yeah. a little foggy, just keep walking through it. Oh, that's great. That's great advice. And yeah. also you don't have to be the next Catherine Emily yeah. Gomez, <laughs> you know? You could be the yourself, you'll be the first you. Yes. And what, I know you said to keep going and there's a lot of people who, what do you say the perfectionists out there, right? Mm -hmm. They know that art could help, having a creative expression could help, but yeah. they're not moving forward because they're like, I don't have, a Catherine, Trisha, I don't have a creative bone in my body. Oh, right, right. <laughs> well, I think also writing, because for me, um, ever since I was a kid, my mom always gave us um, a journal just to write, like a diary. And I carried that with me, especially after my sister passed. So for some reason, I felt inside of me that um, you know, writing things down your thoughts is like mm -hmm. a way to, to just um, kind of like remove those thoughts inside of you and just write it down on a piece of paper and it'll stay there to allow you to keep moving forward. So mm -hmm. almost every day I would write. And if it's not on a physical book, I would write on my cell phone when I was taking the train to from work mm -hmm. as well. So I think writing is really helpful. And who knows, maybe one day you 
gather all those uh, journal entries mm -hmm. and it might, it might lead into um, a published, you know, piece of writing that you want to share to the world of what you've gone through um, wow. as, time pass as well. Um, wow. Another project of mine. <laughs> Oh, you know, well, we look forward to that. Make sure to let us know when that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think writing really helps on top of um, artwork. If you like taking pictures, even if it, your cell phone, that's totally acceptable. Use your cell phone, take portraits of pictures of things that you find um, interesting at the time, whether it's family. During this time, People do get together the first couple of months, maybe a year um, when they do either, if you're religious, you do prayers, or mm -hmm. if you know that your family member is being cremated or in the cemetery, you go to the cemetery, take photos. I think something about that is also capturing um, what you're going through. It's, I think also peaceful. It, feels, it makes you feel like you're doing something about the moment. Mm, yeah. Yes. And it's, it's giving you that, that mind body connection. Yes. Exactly. Right. Make it, you're making it real. And not only that, when you were saying things like writing it down or taking pictures, not only does it help yourself heal, helps your heart, your soul heal, but it also inspires others, just like you're doing right now. Thank you. No, yeah. And there's, there's definitely um, famous artists, um, filmmakers who might um, dive into these topics. So mm -hmm. I think um, researching online and just um, mm -hmm. Googling things that you're thinking about or, you know, um, grieving, uh, YouTube videos as well. And people can, mm -hmm. you can grab onto um, helpful thoughts that other people have already talked about and that might help you too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, connect with Facebook groups. Yes, Facebook groups, absolutely. I also joined the Twinless Twin group as well, which was nice. Sometimes, oh, wow. sometimes you just want to share some thoughts and yes. then other twins that lost their twin to to give you some um advice yeah mm -hmm. and my mom my mom, mom yeah she also joined a greeting mothers group online so now with technology there's so many ways you're not you mm -hmm. never feel like you're alone there's yeah. other people who are going through what you're going through too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever you create, it comes yeah. from the heart. It comes from the soul. Or maybe you don't even know where it's coming from because you can't process everything that's in on the inside. Exactly. But whatever it is, you just start and keep going, right? Yes. Taking walks outside too is helpful. Going to the park, <laughs> getting fresh air. Mm -hmm. Yes, being present in the moment. Yes. Oh, what, <laughs> Catherine, what could you, do you have any, so we're talking about healing, right? Yes. And before the healing, there's lots of stress and anxiety. Do you have any like quick activities that someone could do to like help relieve some stress? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think if you have some paints, um, mm -hmm. They're pretty affordable too at your local like discount store. It doesn't have to be like the fine paintings. It can be um, um, regular mm -hmm. paintings um, at the store. And um, I think mixing, it actually connects to the book that I published as well for, for educational and for kids as well. Mm -hmm. And you can mix primary colors, secondary mm -hmm. colors. Are you talking... What yeah. happens to be this book? Yeah. Colors? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> I think it's therapeutic, not only for kids, children, but um, to adults as well. You know, something that we do on a regular basis is um, enjoy food. And whether it's fruits or um, typical plates, um, try to mimic those colors using the primary, secondary colors. And, you know, you can color a still life bowl of fruits with oranges and apples. And you don't have to be the best painter. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. And even you can start with a sketch and move uh, forward to painting as well. And um, mm -hmm. it's pretty fun. It can be 15 minutes, half an hour, however long you want. Um, and it could be paper or canvas, depending. If you don't have a canvas paper, it can be a plain sheet paper without the lines as well. Okay. Yeah. So sketch or trace and then paint, and that helps, that will help relax, relax you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Also, what about um? I, now I've seen this. I think I've tr I tried it once, and it was very therapeutic. Cause I'm not I'm not an artist in the sense of drawing or painting, but I had a huge canvas, and I think it was around the time I lost my my mother as well. And you just have buckets of paint, and you just get the paintbrush, and you just like ah. yes. 
get it out. Yes. All, which and all, everything that you're putting inside, just splatter it onto the can on the paper. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And I know other people also like to use um, collages. Like if you still have magazine these days, yes. you can cut out favorite things and attach it together. That'll be considered mm-hmm. mixed media as well. Mm-hmm. But I love the paint, the throwing painting. It's like Jackson, uh-huh. uh, Jackson Pollock, um, painter who reminds me of <laughs> just yes. black down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. perfect. Uh, Catherine, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with us and for reminding us that art could be a powerful part of healing. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me. This was so much fun, Trisha. I love it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I love your background as well, the painting and the flower. Oh, all the colors are very therapeutic for me. <laughs> yes, yes, it's so peaceful. I love it. <laughs> so until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and join us at Tribe to Village next time. Thank you. See you Thank next you. time. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.